What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nostantoski here of Maze and Brew, bringing you another episode of Freshman Feature for the class of 2021. School stats, recruitments, projection, you guys know the drill, everything you need to know about the true freshman for the class of 2021 for Michigan football. On the poll from the community tab from Twitter, you guys want to raise Sean Benny. That was episode 11. Check that out in the description below. The second in line there was Jaden Hood. So here we go. Episode 12, Jaden Hood, top 250 linebacker, four star out of St. Thomas Aquinas. So looking at his high school, he spent three years at West Palm Beach Cardinal Newman High School before he transferred to St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for his senior year. He was a three-sport athlete, football, track, and wrestling. And you know me, I love, love, love getting wrestling prospects in the game of football. It helps out so much with balance, hand usage. There's just a ton of things. If you couldn't tell, I was a wrestler, so obviously I'm a little bit biased there. <laughs> okay, so he qualified for states as a sophomore, as a wrestler. So not only was he a wrestler, he was a good one. St. Thomas Aquinas, obviously a powerhouse, all right? Jake Rudock, John O'Korn, Anthony Solomon, a few guys that Michigan has seen uh, in the past or currently with Solomon's case from St. Thomas Aquinas. The 2021 teammate, Jane McBurrows, three-star cornerback, also from St. Thomas Aquinas. He'll be coming up in a later episode. Looking at his stats, he's got a lot of stats here. So senior year, only eight games. He had 52 tackles. Look at his junior year stats, though. 115 tackles, 25 tackles for loss. Add in seven tack or seven sacks, excuse me, five tackle or five force fumbles. I can't speak, and one interception. His sophomore year tallied 55 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, five sacks, one force fumble, and two fumble recoveries. All right, looking at his metrics, couldn't find 40 shuttle or vertical, but he weighs in at 215 pounds at 6'1. So good size for the interior linebacker position here. His rankings, Composite is within the top 250 nationally at 249. ESPN and Rivals had him around the 200 range nationally, 24-7, by far the biggest outlier here, only a three-star outside of the top 70 recruits in the state of Florida. So quite a bit of difference there when you look at ESPN and Rivals versus uh, 24-7, so a little bit interesting. So his offers, his top 10 list, Kentucky, Louisville, Miami, Michigan, Minnesota, South Carolina, USF, Vanderbilt, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. He did have some offers, like one from Alabama. Hard to know how committable that offer is if he didn't make his top 10, but I digress. Miami is that other team from that top 10 that really stood out in his recruitment. So for his recruitment, he never got out to Michigan to visit campus. Obviously, lockdown prohibited a lot of recruits from actually doing so. He was in frequent communication with Harbaugh, Don Brown, Brian Jean-Marie. Obviously, two of three are now gone, but through his recruitment, he impressed at some camps. He earned an All-American invite game at Under Armour's Miami camp, and Miami was in pretty early on his recruitment, being from the area. Uh, he committed on May 25th of 2022, the good guys, the Wolverines, he was a guy, a fair amount of people were worried about a potential flip candidate, right? Miami pushing really hard right in the backyard, add in the fact that he's not able to visit campus. He's a candidate you would uh, see a potential flip for. Did end up signing dur during the early signing period in December of 2020, and I'm sure fans and the uh, staff alike let out a big exhale <laughs> as he signed his letter of intent. All right, his scouting here. Good combination of speed and power. You'll see that in his film if you haven't already. Extremely hard hitter. Very quick in diagnosing plays. Kind of important for a linebacker, right? So good to have that on his list. Willing to take on blocks and shed solid angles in pursuit and plays extremely fast. So the only downsides, not a lot of film seeing him defending the pass that much. There are questions about him operating in zone coverage. For me, I, I, I love how he plows through contact. It's kind of like when you see a running back always falling forward, you see him always affecting players, right? <laughs> whether, whether he's going in the right way or not, usually he is, but he is bowling over anyone that gets in his way. So I like that a lot. He takes really solid angles in his pursuit as well. He could redirect really well at uh, at certain times in his angles. Um, he did look a bit stiff at times. I'll give him that. In, in open space, when he's not coming downhill, sometimes he looks a, a little uncomfortable. So something just to watch moving forward. Again, haven't seen enough film of it to really make a true prediction there. His film, all right, as always, 8.30 p.m. tonight, Wednesday, uh, live stream. Go, th go through all things Jaden Hood. So come hang out on the Maze and Brew YouTube channel, and we'll go through his film in more detail than I am right now for his comp 
So he's actually very similar to fellow 2021 recruit Junior Colson. If you go back, I've covered him. He's early enrollee. He, he has a very similar profile I see there. If you're looking for a past Wolverine, I see Jaden Hood is someone between Josh Ross and Cam McGrown. All right. Josh Ross, Cam McGrown, their rankings. Ross was 211 nationally, number nine inside linebacker. McGrown was uh, higher ranked at 118 nationally and seven outside linebacker. Jaden Hood, so a little bit lower than both those guys, right? At around 250 nationally. So 250 compared to 211 or 118, right? I think I think McGrone is a little bit more smooth of an overall athlete than you see out of Hood. So there was very little stiffness to McGrone's game, right? He was a true sideline to sideline guy. And I think Hood could have some improvement in his hips, open up those hips, get a little more fluid in that regard. But Hood brings the heat and has the instincts that closer of Ross. Ross coming out of high school, uh, a guy who was lauded for his instincts, his quick ability to read and react. Uh, he's also a guy who's one of the hardest hitters on the team. And you watch Jaden Hood's film, it's hard to, you know, hard to see big of a difference there. And I think he has potential to add that as a part of this class, that hard hitting ability. So despite the 2020 rough season for Josh Ross, I think he's still a potential NFL guy. Obviously Cam McGrone, now in New England as a fifth rounder, he's an NFL guy. So Jaden Hood, if he puts it all together, he has that, that level of athleticism to get into a mid to late round draft pick. And I think he could. So for his projection, Mike position is pretty thin right now, right? We still need to know kind of where the defense is going overall, but interior linebacker is position of need right now. The only true experience you have is Josh Ross and Mike Barrett, okay? There are some guys who haven't really proved themselves yet in Nikai Hill Green and Khalil Mullings that are slotted for the inside as well. And then I already mentioned Junior Colson, the early enrollee fellow 2021 recruit. So it's highly dependent on, on how he can adapt to the position, right? You need to be the commander of the defense. That doesn't happen overnight. So it, it seems like Junior Colson has the upper hand here already, kind of cracking the two deep. So I'd be shocked if we saw Hood much this year at all. Give him a year, redshirt him, utilize him in garbage time, get him on special teams. I think he has potential to be a great special teams player. I didn't even put that in my notes, but I think he really could be. If he can carve out a role this year, he could do that. If not 2022 as a redshirt freshman, I think that's where you really utilize him, get him playing experience as he's ramping up mentally, get him engaged, and he can be a really solid piece there. Uh, and then it's really just fight out for a position in 2023 and beyond. You know, I, I really like Junior Colson this year, but maybe he will be slotted more for the outside. Jane Hood, I, I love the physicality he brings. And I think I think he has he has a lot of potential. It's just a matter of fighting out Hill Green, Khalil Mullins, what happens there, how those guys develop, which we haven't seen a whole lot yet. So I think there is a, some opportunity for Hood to supplant those guys. But it's hard to say at this point. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, 8.30 p.m. tonight. Come hang out in the live stream uh, for next week's episodes. Pull on Twitter. Pull on the community tab. Check those out. Who do you guys want to see? Uh, there's about 10 guys remaining that I need to cover. So let me know who you guys want to see, and I'll get to that. And then finally, like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. We'll be getting through all of these hopefully in the next month or two. So here we go. Beyond that, guys, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. I appreciate it a ton. Stay safe out there. And as always, go Blue.